Christmas Faith Community family. Uh, for those of you who joined us last night at our Christmas Eve candlelight communion service, all I can say is, wow. That was such an amazing night of worship, of fellowship, and of adoration to the newborn King. Uh, we're so thrilled to be here with you on Christmas morning. And listen, we're so proud of you for taking the time to connect with Jesus on this day where we celebrate his birth. Uh, don't forget, uh, got to do a little bit of groundwork here this morning. Uh, don't forget that we have a devotional that we've created for you and your family to go through together um, on this Christmas morning. If you didn't get this at church last night or maybe last Sunday um, and you'd like to do it, you can right now log on to faithtucson.org, pull up the PDF, uh, walk it through with your family. It's a fabulous uh, tool of, of reading God's word, discussion questions, um, and really just making it a point to celebrate the Christ of Christmas together. Listen, we're doing all of this because we love Jesus. We love his word and we love being his people. And man, I'm just so excited about this, right? Like, uh, yeah, I've got a Christmas cold, hence the water and the, you know, the tissue and maybe the, the funny sounding voice, but I've also got the faux reading glasses. I've got the ascot, my dad's favorite ascot. I got my boy, my girl, my other girl. The only one we're missing is Dempsey, but Mill's here, my beautiful wife's here. It's good. So we're so grateful that you're here with us. Here's how this is going to work. For the next 15 minutes or so, my wife's going to open us up in prayer. Uh, Mill's going to lead us in one more song. Then I'm going to have a Christmas message for us. And uh, it's going to be a great morning. Hey, why don't you lead us in prayer? 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. We praise you for his birth and the hope that he brings to our lives. As we celebrate his birth, help us to also remember your great love for us. Let this Christmas season be a reminder of all that he has done. We praise you for your great love. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, come. Joyful and triumphant, O oh, come, ye, O oh, come, ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold Him, born the King of Israel. I've had the lyrics to that great Christmas song been running through my mind. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. So for the next 15 minutes or so, I'd like for us to just consider why. Why should we do what this song suggests? Why should we come and adore Jesus Christ the Lord on this Christmas morning? Well, perhaps the answer to that question can be found by answering another question. And that question is, how is your inner world today? 
Are, are you able to cope with all the stresses, the guilt, the alienation perhaps that you find yourself dealing with today? Are you finding the resources within to deal with the routine and the daily pressures of life? Or would you honestly respond to that question by saying, you know what, no, I'm walking in a great deal of darkness, frustration, and depression. I bring that up because there was two tribes of Israel that experienced a great deal of darkness. Those two tribes were Zebulun and Nephtali. They had experienced devastation when the Assyrians back in 722 BC came in and conquered them. These two tribes of people became prisoners, they became slaves, and they found themselves living in absolute gloom and anguish. And it's in the middle of that dark situation that the famous prophet named Isaiah came on the scene and, and came with the word of hope. Isaiah informed these people that who were living in this darkness, he informed them that things are going to change. So how about you today? Maybe you've come from a family of destructive, dysfunctional people. Maybe the, there's a history of your life is one that is filled with page after page of heartache and of pain. Maybe you're looking at your life today and yeah, it's kind of the end of a year. We're looking towards a new year. Yeah, it's Christmas day, but you're being honest with yourself saying, man, there's just nothing but darkness. But on this Christmas 2022, you've tuned in to this message with a purpose. And that is because you're looking for light. You're looking for hope. You're looking and longing for encouragement. Well, it's in the ninth chapter of Isaiah that the prophet of God is speaking some 500 or 600 years before the coming of Jesus Christ to the city of Bethlehem. He's predicting it. He's prophesying to it. And with this prophetic word, and I hope you hear it this morning, comes with a message of hope and encouragement. He begins the ninth chapter by saying, but there will be no gloom, no sadness, no despair for her who was in anguish. Verse two, he says, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. <clears throat> Those who dwell in a land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. Wow. Wow. So on this Christmas 2022, we need to ask, who is this great light that the prophet Isaiah was talking about? And why can this great light increase our joy even today, thousands of years later, if we will come and adore him? Well, down in verse six, Isaiah gives us the first reason why when he said this, you just heard it in the song. He said, for, for to us, a child is born to us, a son is given. That statement is a statement of origin. Uh, to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. Sonship always has to do with the divinity of Jesus. So understand that Jesus Christ's humanity it began some 2,000 years ago when he was born in a manger in the city of Bethlehem. But his divinity was there from the beginning of eternity. This is something known theologically as the eternal begetting of the Son. Understand that Jesus is 100% God. He's 100% man. The Bible says that he was the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundations of the world. Now, now maybe you hear all that and you think, well, Pastor Tim, when Jesus was born as a baby in Bethlehem, was he worthy of worship? Was he worthy to be adored? Was he, is he really both God and man? And the answer is yes, yes to all of the above. Yes, Jesus is worthy to be worshiped and adored. Yes, Jesus was and is both God and man. You see, Jesus was born with a human nature. He was born a child, but Jesus was also born with a divine nature as the son of God with power, with authority. And that's why, if you remember from last night's message, the Magi got it right when they fell down and worshiped the Christ child. Or consider the fact, one of my other favorite scenes in scripture uh, pertinent to the Christmas story is in Luke chapter two, when an old man by the name of Simeon, who had waited faithfully at the temple for the Christ, when he was able to hold the baby Jesus in his arms, 
What was he doing? Simeon was beholding God. Simeon was looking into the very face of God. And so on this Christmas 2022, I want you to know that Jesus, whom we adore, he has a very special origin. But I also want you to know that this baby, who was God of very God, also has a special name, a name worthy to be adored. Notice what Isaiah said in verse six of this great ninth chapter. He says, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Everything in me wants to say names, but you'll notice the middle of verse six, it says his name shall be called. Singular for all of you grammar English majors out there. In other words, this is really one long singular name that I want to break down into four names, four couplets to help us understand. You'll notice that when God the Father names God the Son, there's no designation here that is given to Jesus that he is unworthy of. Jesus Christ is worthy of all the names that honor and glorify who he is. The first name given to him here is the name Wonderful Counselor. Now, let me ask you a question that ties into our opening question. Where do you go when your life gets difficult? Where do you go when you need counsel? Where do you go when the pain is so deep that in your own life you can hardly bear it? You know, some people go to drinking, to drugs, to maybe to excess amounts of food or to fun, to entertainment, to somehow kind of deaden or drown out the pain. Maybe for you, when you're going through a difficult time, you go to a friend who is perhaps in or has been in the same predicament as you. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, it's, it's always helpful to talk and to have a sounding board of someone who can listen to you and respond. But what you really need is a counselor who can truly intervene, who can make a real difference. And I want you to know this morning that Jesus is the wonderful counselor. You see, Jesus Christ knows exactly who you are. He knows everything that you've been through. He knows the struggles and the hurts that you've experienced over the course of your life. He knows the sins that you've committed. He knows the mistakes that you've made. He even knows the sins that have been committed against you. And as a result, Jesus is able to lead you through whatever darkness or depression, whatever guilt, whatever shame, whatever disappointment you find yourself in even on this Christmas morning because Jesus truly is the wonderful counselor. The next name given of Jesus here by the prophet Isaiah is the mighty God. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard this before, but there are some people who have said, nowhere in the Bible is Jesus explicitly called God. Well, <laughs> those people would be wrong because it says it right here. Jesus Christ, the Messiah is spoken of by the prophet Isaiah as the mighty God. And like the wise men did 2000 years ago, and as many have done since, what we're doing today is we are coming and we are adoring Jesus Christ, the mighty God. But maybe you're thinking, okay, but Pastor Tim, the real question is, but why do I need a mighty God in my life? Why do I need a mighty God to rescue me? Well because of the depth of our need, because of how great our need is. You know, for example, this isn't the best example in the world, but um, if you were in a pool or in the water at the ocean, at the beach, and you started drowning, you know, you're having a hard time keeping your head above water, you're flailing, you're, you're beginning to go under, perhaps a mildly trained lifeguard would be able to save you. But if you are lifeless at the bottom of a pool, not moving, not breathing, if you are absolutely dead, then the highest trained lifeguard won't be able to help you. What you need is a mighty God. You see, I believe that the depth of our need is indicated by who it is that came to rescue us. God said humanity is in such deep trouble because of their sin and depravity that only me, the great I am, is able to come and rescue them. There's no one else capable to save these people other than me, the great God. And that's why Jesus is worthy of that title given him by the prophet Isaiah, the mighty God. The third name given to Jesus is everlasting father. 
that brings up an interesting question. Is the prophet here saying that Jesus is the father? Because that would be contrary to other teachings that are very clear in the New Testament. Uh, so no, that's not what the prophet is saying. Rather, what Isaiah has in mind is that Jesus is the father of eternity. Now you say, Pastor Tim, what does that mean? Well, think of it like this. Uh, remember when Jesus referred to Satan as the father of lies? What that meant is that Satan is the originator of lies. And it's the same here, that Jesus is the originator of eternity. So he is the almighty and the everlasting father. Once again, indicating by the prophet his deity and his eternality. The scripture put it this way in Micah 5, 2, another great prophet of God said of the Messiah, his coming forth is from old and from everlasting. Jesus is the everlasting father. The final name given to Jesus here by the prophet is, we're losing the kids this morning, all right, is the Prince of Peace. I better hurry, we're gonna lose all the kids watching online too. So the fourth name is the Prince of Peace. You know, there's a number of different kinds of peace that God brings into our life. But what Prince of Peace primarily means is that Jesus not only brings us to the Father, but Jesus can take care of all of the sin, the guilt, and the worry that's been troubling you and weighing you down and stealing your peace. It's important to understand what is meant by the peace that Jesus brings. One word that transcends all the other words in defining the peace of God is one of my favorite words in the Bible. It's the word shalom. Shalom is a dense and deeply profound concept. Philippians 4, 7 describes the peace or the shalom of God as transcending all understanding. Shalom means far more than just the absence of war, just the absence of conflict. Shalom implies a sense of completeness, wholeness, fulfillness, and soundness. Shalom means harmony and relationship within one's own conscience. Listen, the consequence of sin may continue. But you today on this Christmas 2022 are able to walk away even from this digital sermon knowing that you are forgiven and that only God can forgive you. And that's why Jesus came. Jehovah Shalom sacrificed his son to give us eternal peace. Colossians 1.19 puts it this way. It says, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven. How? By making peace through his blood shed on the cross. You see, church, the beauty of Jesus is that he wants and he can bring you into peace with God and also peace with yourself. I know that some of you, even on this morning, are in a cauldron of intense emotions. You're, you've got a, what we could call a civil war going on inside of you. And if that's true of where you, you're at today, then know that the mighty counselor, the mighty God, Jesus Christ speaks peace today. The Bible says the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart. And I love this promise from Jesus. He said, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Finley's back. This is a key moment. Only Jesus can forgive your sins. Only Jesus can calm your fears. Only Jesus can remove your guilt. Only Jesus is the Prince of Peace. So bring your small problems, bring your big problems, bring all your problems, but just bring them to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come and worship. Come and adore Christ the Lord. Listen, church, Jesus can handle it. How, how do I know Jesus can handle it? Because Listen to how Isaiah put it. If the government of the world will be upon his shoulders, then I'm here to tell you he can handle whatever you're going to bring Jesus' way today. The question is, of course, not is Jesus able. The question is, are you willing to transfer your sins and your burdens and your brokenness to him? Are you willing, even on this Christmas morning, to recognize your need for Jesus Christ? 
Are you willing to recognize that he is your wonderful counselor, your mighty God, your everlasting father, and your prince of peace? You know, what's so interesting to me is that every other religion will say, here are the answers to all the big questions of life. (laughs) But Christianity, the gospel, says Jesus is the answer to every question and to every problem you're facing today. It's all found in Jesus. So we began by talking about those two tribes, Zebulun and Naphtali, the two tribes who sat in anguish and in gloom, the two tribes who walked in darkness, the two tribes whom Isaiah promised and prophesied would receive light and a hope. And that light and that hope, the answer to their every problem was found in Jesus. So in closing, again, I ask you, are you walking in light? Or are you just trying to manage your own darkness? That darkness and emptiness must be satisfied by someone. And on this Christmas morning, I'm here to remind you that it can only be satisfied by Jesus Christ, the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So I ask you, do you know the Son who was given? Do you know this Son who was born? Do you know Christ the Lord? You can. And I pray that you will, because only Jesus can bring light to your darkness today. So Father, we want to thank you for this marvelous prediction. We thank you for how accurate it is that this child, this son, (coughs) can do everything that he's named to be able to do. So God, I pray that whoever's watching this, wherever they may be, however they may be listening today, God, would you just draw them not to to us, not to what we're doing here, but would, would you draw them to you even now? Would you overcome the blindness and the misunderstanding that they're feeling and facing? Right now, I want everyone listening. I don't care where you're at or who's around, just talk to God. That's what prayer is. It's talking to God. And tell the Lord whatever it is that you need to tell him today. Tell him of your need for him. And just receive Jesus right where you are. Say to him, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, like that song said, I adore you. And Jesus, I ask that you would forgive me of my sins, that you would come into my heart, that you would be my Lord, my Savior, and my God. You can do that now. Father, we thank you for this gift. And we rejoice today with the angels that sang when that gift came, when that child was born, when that son was given. We join them in praise. Glory to God in the highest. Thank you, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We made it. We made it. Listen, Merry Christmas. We love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. Can't wait to see you at Faith Community Church next Sunday, normal times 9 and 11. Love you guys.